It's just after 10 p.m. on Saturday night, and a coach has arrived at the Mead Rest Centre for Ukrainian refugees in Navan. There are 33 passengers. First off the bus are mothers carrying sleeping infants and young children, exhausted after an arduous journey from their homeland across Europe to Ireland. They're anxious to get the kids inside and into a bed. There are small family groupings as well as some young women and men who have travelled alone. They are all strangers to each other, thrown together through unimaginable circumstances. Thirteen Ukrainian nationals had arrived on an earlier bus the same evening, bringing the total number of guests to 46, and just short of the capacity available at the rest centre, which is a council building transformed into temporary accommodation and reception centre. The first task is to register and process the new arrivals. My role here is just uh, administration, um, to, to, to basically, I receive the people in, get their names, dates of births, um, the family units, how many are in a family unit, and then assign them an, a number. Uh, we assign them to a tent, so one of my colleagues then will, will take them and assign them, or show them where their tent is, um, which bed they're in, and then show them where the toilets and shower facilities are and where they can get fed. My name is Roman and I'm working at the Civil Defence. Roman Rizkov works at the Meath Rest Centre as an interpreter and has unique insight into just how the new arrivals are feeling. I'm Ukrainian myself and I was in this uh, centre for about uh, two months ago and right now I work as an interpreter so I'm aware with all the uh, process of registering and right now I'm helping yeah, people from my country to get settled in. Sometimes I get a chance to meet people from my hometown so uh, yeah, things are a bit crazy but it's a, it's a great opportunity to help to make a difference. Meade's Civil Defence volunteer Helen O'Connell makes sure the new arrivals get plenty to eat during their stay at the Meade Rest Centre. Your basics for all fresh food seems to be uh, well received and premium in that. Um, then after that you're just talking about in the morning your basic porridge, your very basic foods and that. Very hungry in the first few days when they build up the energy and that. You see the smiles and relax and then about 24 hours after it's lovely. Particularly good when you see the kiddos and that. The sleeping arrangements are basic but comfortable. There are six large marquees all equipped with camp beds and chairs. Towels and a toiletry bag are laid out for the new guests. Hot showers are available as well as tables of toys for the children and shelves stocked with baby and sanitary products. Darren McGowan, Meath County Council Director of Services and the man charged with the responsibility for the Meath Rest Centre, took the Chronicle on a tour of the facility and outlined what happens next over the coming days. Let's bring them in, have a chat, explain how the system is going to work, the support services are going to be put in place and, and we deal with any questions they ask and the questions vary from how do I get a job, how do I get English classes to basically how do I get PPS numbers and I have medical condition things like that so during the next three or four days then we would deal with all the individuals and we organise appointments with the entry office for their PPS number anybody who has needs prescription or medical assistance we organise it with the HSE we have been dealing with the LME to be who provide some English classes up here on site for them. And we also will shop and get them some essential stuff that they have because they come with very little from Ukraine. So we organize stuff that they can have just clean clothes and things like that. So all that happens in the first few days. And then probably about Wednesday or Thursday then after the arrive IPAS, which is the Inter Inter International Protection Accommodation Service, which works with the Department of Children. They then assign accommodation, more long-term accommodation, and then we will organise transport to that accommodation for the people. While here, the care of the Ukrainian visitors is managed by Mead Civil Defence. Okay, so my name is Shane Quinn, and I'm the Civil Defence Officer here with Mead County Council. The centre here is managed on a 24-7 basis by volunteers of Mead Civil Defence. Uh, generally, uh, we would have a cohort of, of about 12 volunteers on over three shifts. Uh, during the 24 hours. Since the 21st of March, we've about three and a half thousand volunteer hours covered here in the rest centre. Uh, so we have having dealt with over 360 displaced people in that period. While still carrying out all of their other work, such as search and recovery and medical support, the rest centre assignment has proved particularly rewarding for the volunteers. Yes, it, 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 it's an immense uh, sense of joy to look at the, the volunteers and the teamwork that's going on. Uh, and of course, across civil defence, we do more than just 
breast centres, we have, we have a wide variety of activities that goes on from medical, emergency assistance, search and recovery. Uh, but for the purpose of this, this rest centre, uh, volunteers from all areas have stepped up to the mark and become welfare volunteers looking after our guests, uh, whatever their needs may be. One of those guests is Tanya, who travelled alone to Ireland from Ukraine and is grateful for the welcome she has received in Ireland and by the volunteers at the Mead Rest Centre. Uh, I'm very um, uh, uh, thank, uh, thankful uh, for them so, uh, because they gave us uh, a bed to sleep, uh, they gave us food, uh, we have a roof under our heads. Uh, cause, uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's, okay. it's hard, yeah. It's okay. Take your time. Yeah, because... Sorry. Yeah. It was hard because um, I leave my family there. Uh, because I have a, a granny, she is, uh, she is sick. My mom uh, can't leave my granny. And uh, my father can't leave my mother and, yeah, you know, so... Yeah, yeah, it's complicated, but um, but it's my d decision to stay here. Maybe. Uh, and who did you travel here with? I'm alone. You're alone. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 every day I, I message them or we uh, we talk uh, on a video chat. So yeah, we uh, keep keep in chat. Oh, how how? Yeah. So. What of Europe now? What would you like to do? Uh, I was working, but I lost my job, uh, and um, my plan is uh, to work. Uh, I already have uh, uh, some uh, interviewing, yeah, and uh, I hope that I'll find a job and I will work. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope I, I, I 100 percent sure that we will win. And, I'm, 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 I will go home. It would humble you to see the amount of um, hours, effort, and the, the humane efforts that going in to help these people, you know, that have come from their war-torn country. Um, I must commend um, Shane and all his volunteers in the Civil Defence Unit. Um, but I also must say that the Ukrainian people themselves who are here, who have come, um, it is so humbling to see uh, their reaction, their gratitude, their appreciation of everything that's been done for them. And I hope that the people of Mead will continue to do this until they get the opportunity to return to their ho homeland and back to their families. Having arrived on Saturday, it's now Wednesday morning and time to leave for more long-term accommodation elsewhere in the county and country. Liaison officer and interpreter Justine is allocating groups to waiting transport and for her the experience of looking after and supporting the Ukrainian refugees is a deeply personal one. So, I'm originally from Poland but my mom is Ukrainian and a part of my mom all my family is in Ukraine, so it starts from my personal fear. I start gathering humanitarian aid and the generosity of the public exceed my expectation and in two days I had full house, so civil defense helped me with that and we start cooperating with the humanitarian aid sending to Ukraine and to Poland. And after we finished that, I've been asked to help them with the first group which arrived uh, to translate. And we went from there. And currently we, we sent our seventh group already. You know, it's very emotional, but very rewarding. I feel, I felt helpless in the beginning and now I found the purpose. So it's not only that I'm providing service for people, but it helps me also to, to deal with the situation. So I think it's symbiosis, if we can say like that, because it's not only me doing something for them, they do doing a lot for me as well. Every single group, every single person is different. So I'm kind of volunteering as a liaison officer on behalf of civil defense. I'm doing translations. I'm starting from introduction 
I translate official uh, talks from county council and then I also talk with everybody. I never ask them. I don't want to re-traumatize them, but I always make them sure, like, make them feel that I'm there for them. So whoever want to come, I always there for them and, and I hear so everything what I do. Despite this being the seventh group of refugees to depart, it never gets any easier for Justina. I'm actually treating them like my own. If anybody from my family would leave Ukraine, I would like somebody to look after them. as so I'm trying to look after our guests. And I'm staying in touch with every group since group one. I'm not saying with every single person, but I have at least one or two families that are within every single location and at least once a week I'm ringing and I'm checking how you're doing, are you okay, to make sure that even if they move, they're not alone. Suitcases, bags and buggies are being gathered and packed away in the luggage holes. Civil Defence volunteers are on hand providing lunch bags to keep the visitors going on their onward journey. After four days at the rest centre, it's clear to see the impact it's had both on the volunteers and their hosts. It may be basic in terms of home comforts, an alien experience, but yet this place has been a place of sanctuary where compassion, dignity and respect go hand in hand with the welcome for fellow human beings in need of help. The coaches pull out under the fluttering flags of Ireland, Ukraine and the Civil Defence, whose volunteers along with council staff are waving them off. 46 souls forced to flee their country, now on the final leg of a journey to a new life in Ireland, but with the hope that they can one day return home. <laughs>